Yeah, hello everyone in the audience and thanks to the JSC for inviting me and having me here. Um, today I want to tell you something about wet compression molding and how to bring that in the third dimension. I will start uh, with some facts and figures about Fremo and then I will come to the composite technologies of Fremo. Then we go into the topic of the wet compression molding and the challenges, especially for 3D applications. And later on, I will come to some um, um, also alternatives to the paper honeycomb and a summary in the end. So what is Fremo or who is Fremo? We are a company who is acting worldwide with 1,250 employees. Uh, we have locations in Europe, in Asia, and also in America. Um, and we are acting at a total revenue of about 160 million uh, yearly. And um, to show you how innovative we are, we have 24 SPE awards, two JEC group awards, and one AVK award in the recent years. Um, we have a global network. That means, but like I told you, we are um, in, in the whole world with production locations. So we have, uh, we have the main production locations and the centers of competence in Europe. And we have production locations in the US and Mexico. And we have also one in China. So what is Fremo and what it, does it provide? Um, Fremo is coming from the automotive industry and that's why we are mainly in those technologies. That means we are providing from pressing, forming, thermoforming, and uh, the entire value chain for automotive interior components. Um, all you need to produce automotive interior. And uh, we are starting at the very stage, um, at the very early beginning, at the engineering, um, over project management and prototyping up to the production of the first components. It doesn't mean that we are a part producer. We are supplying um, the equipment and the tooling, but uh, for the first components, we can also support our customers with part production. What is Fremo doing in, in terms of composites? So we have basically three main um, technologies and trends in the composites industry. We are working on NFPP, which is natural fibers and polypropylene. And we are um, compression mold the NFPP and do back injection and over molding. That is one big field of our business. We also do organo sheet forming and uh, over molding. That is the second field. That's both uh, thermoplastic technologies. And we also have a quite big field of uh, thermoset technologies. And it is RTM, it's the wet compression molding, which I will tell you today. And of course, also a little bit of uh, pre break um, What is the wet compression molding? Um, basically, it is the yeah, less expensive um, variant of RTM. Um, you need a stack that could be existing of different fiber layers. It could also contain a, um, a sandwich core and you need um, a resin, and that together uh, gives a very stiff and uh, solid part. And the main um, advantage for the wet compression molding is for sure um, the short cycle times compared to RTM. So how does it work? In the beginning, you need to do unwinding of uh, the fiber material and stack it um, to get a stack of the fiber materials and um, um, maybe also a sandwich core. Um, then you need to apply the resin onto the stack. You transfer the stack into the wet compression molding tool. And in the end, you do pressing, uh, pressing and curing of the stack. That looks in the video like this. So we took the video out of, a, of the BMW production where we supplied the tools for. Um, it's a wet compression molding tool for a body and white component of the 7 Series BMW. 
And what you see is basically the, the compression molding process. A big advantage of the wet compression molding is that you can do a fully automated process. And that is what you also can see here in this video. All right. What is the difference now between this wet compression molding and uh, wet compression molding with uh, the paper honeycomb? So the first thing is, as a sandwich core, we use the paper honeycomb material. And uh, the second thing is, instead of, um, like you could see in the video, um, we do not use an epoxy resin. For the paper honeycomb, you, you usually have a polyurethane resin. And um, on this stack of glass fiber and paper honeycomb, you apply a spray pattern of polyurethane. That is usually done by a robot. And once the spray pattern is uh, applied onto the stack, you handle the stack into the compression molding tool by also using a robot. And that is what you can see on the right video. So the robot now gets into the press from the backside and puts the stack into the compression molding tool. For the press process itself, you have different opportunities or different um, yeah, possibilities. Um, so in this case, the press upper bladen swivels down and um, is presented to the operator for integrating of, for instance, metallic inserts. So now the operator can get in, can place the inserts, and the upper plate and swivels back and closes for pressing and curing. All right, so far to the process. What are the, the challenges now if you want to bring the 3D, uh, the, the third dimension for uh, wet compression molding? So we have to achieve more complex shapes. We have to use the paper honeycomb maybe for that or other cores. We have to keep the cycle time and the cost on a lower level. And we have to ensure um, the part quality by doing the uh, um, proof of concept on an industrial scale. So it, uh, it's not worth doing like a 300 by 300 size uh, proof of concept if you want to end up with a component of 2 meter by 1.5 meter. That makes no sense. So you have to find a solution for doing the proof of concept on the original scale. And at the end, uh, none of the projects is running just in Europe. Uh, you have to find also a way of doing the techn or providing the technology globally. So first challenge, how to bring uh, the paper honeycomb into the third dimension. As you can see, with different uh, thicknesses of paper honeycomb, um, you have different challenges. The thinner the paper honeycomb is, the better it is for the forming. So, um, Thicker components are hard to bring into the uh, third dimension, and you also have problems with the resin impregnation in the end. So what you can do is you can uh, stack different sizes, different pre-cuts of the paper honeycomb to achieve a near 3D shape of the component and bring that into uh, uh, the compression molding tool. And that leads already to the next challenge. So you have to handle the paper honeycomb sandwich into um, the spray process and also into the press process. And um, 
Therefore, uh, and that all needs to be done by keeping the, the, the paper honeycomb in exactly the position like you want it into the tool. So you can support it by stapling or by sewing the fiber material, or an, uh, another alternative could also be a 3D shaped uh, honeycomb core. Yeah, as the as the handling is the key to the cycle time because it that needs to be done on the on a very low time and uh, it it also needs to be done very precisely. There are alternatives, like I said, you can use three D cores. There could be, uh, for instance, like you see on the right picture, a three D shaped core from polyurethane, and that also helps to. Um, to get a better and more uniform impregnation of the sandwich. And in the end, it stabilizes um, the sandwich during the handling process. Yeah, in terms of the um, industrial scale proof of concept, we can support our customers by having an or, yeah, industrial size tech center. And, um, since two years, we are together with the company Henneke. We formed the Automotive Alliance, and this uh, supports this topic as well. So we can provide, um, on a scale of up to three meter by two meter, um, tech center capabilities. We have the polyurethane spray equipment. We have RTM and wet RTM equipment. And we have the right press sizes. We have also smaller press sizes. And uh, we have on all tech centers uh, locations the robotic handling capabilities, which we can adapt very flexible to our tooling and the entire process. So if you want to uh, run that also globally, you need a team to sell it globally, to do the application engineering globally and also installation, commissioning, and uh, after-sales service. So together with the Henneke team, we have all of that, and we can support our customers worldwide. I told you already about the alternatives to the paper honeycomb. Um, from our perspective, we see uh, core materials like polyurethane, which can be easily put into 3D shapes, also, LFI comes up as an alternative, which is also polyurethane with a glass fiber material, glass fiber reinforcement. There are um, a couple of thermoplastic honeycombs, um, for instance, EPP core, and um, for sure there are also some metallic alternatives. So I don't want to say uh, one of the alternatives is always the right one. We have to have a look on the frame conditions. We have to look into the details together, and we can help you to choose the right solution for, for your um, application. And in the end, it, it, had also, it has also to do with the uh, production volume and the process temperatures, if you can go, for instance, for an EPP core. Yeah, in the end, what does it mean? Um, the wet compression molding has developed in the recent years to a very interesting process, even for more 3D shapes and also for high production volumes because of the low uh, cycle times. Um, the requirements for the process for sure need to be considered in a very early stage. So we have to do some part of the development together to uh, figure out the right process conditions and uh, to maybe develop the part together into the right shape. And if that is all done in the very early stage, then we can uh, support you with engineering, with the tech center. We can provide uh, um, service worldwide. And uh, whatever you want, if you would want to do that, uh, semi-automated, fully automated, or if you want to have a turnkey line with follow-up processes like punching or milling or even end-of-line control. That's all feasible if we blend it together. That's it from my side. Any questions? 
If not, then you can also visit us on our booth in this uh, hall at LAD. So thanks for your interest and have a nice day. <laughs>